I want to know what love is. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. To know love, you must know God, for God is love. Without knowing God, you will never know love. You might know worldly distortions of love, but that's not real love. It might be lust disguised as love, and that's what gets you into narcissistic relationships. It could be abusive behaviors disguised as love. It could be selfish actions disguised as love. It could be a selfish appetites disguised as love. I love you if, I love you but, I love you only when. It could be lust disguised as love. And these are worldly deceptions of love. But true love can only be known and experienced when you know God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God is love and love is God. Without knowing God, you do not know love, but you know worldly deceptions of love, worldly distortions of, of love, while being deceived that you know love when you do not. You see, real love can only be experienced through God. Let's start there. And God is more willing to give you love than you are to receive his love. Pay attention, this is very important. God is more willing to give us love than we are to receive his love. A lot of us, we complain that we don't know the love of God. We don't have the love of God. And if God loved us, then why does he allow this to happen? And so on and so forth. But God is more willing to give us love than we are to receive his love. Have you noticed that you give, people might be playing the victim mentality that they have no love, they have no understanding, they have no this, that, on the other. So you give them love, the love of Christ, which is in you, flowing through you. You give them love and they always, always, always find a way to self-sabotage and push that love away. It's the same with God. God is more willing to give us his love than we are to receive his love the bible says in matthew chapter 7 verses 9 through 11 what man is there among you who if his son asks for a bread will give him a stone or if his son asks for a fish will give him a serpent if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him so basically what the bible is saying here who among you if your son is hungry and asks you for some bread will give him a stone in, 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 instead of bread no one if your child is hungry and asks you for bread you will give him bread it continues to say, who among you, if your son asks for a fish, he's hungry, asks for a fish to eat, will give him a serpent to bite him? No one. If your child asks, is hungry and asks for fish, you're going to give him food. You're going to give him fish to eat. The Bible continues to say, so if you being evil, why are we evil? Well, when Adam sinned and the whole of mankind fell into this evil, evil it fell into this fallen state uh, we have the seed of sin within us so you be if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children if you being evil know how to give good gifts when your child asks asks you for bread or fish you give to them so if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your to your children how much more your father in heaven who has no evil in him who has no darkness in him how much more will your father in heaven give good gifts good things to his children us we are his children will give good gifts to his children who ask him how much more much much more how much more will your father in heaven good give good gifts to us so we need to always 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 no exceptions 
always 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 approach God with the consciousness of my loving father with the consciousness of Abba the Bible tells us in Romans 8 15 Romans 8 15 the Spirit the Holy Spirit the Spirit you received does not make you slaves let me find a better version let me go to New King James Version ah okay for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again okay let me start again for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear you know the spirit of fear the spirit of bondage you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out abba father so it is the spirit of adoption the holy spirit of god who comes in us and causes us to cry out father my father to cry out abba abba father the holy spirit comes in and causes you to cry out my father my father we could not possibly know the father Abba, we could not possibly know the love of the Father without the Holy Spirit coming in us and giving us this revelation of our Father. He is, he is my Father. He is Abba. You see? So we have to always, always, always approach God. Whether we're in prayer speaking to God whether we're just sitting in the presence of God, we have to always, always, always approach God with the consciousness of Abba, Father. Abba, Father. Remember the prodigal son that Jesus spoke of? He had two sons. One of them stayed with him and the other one left and decided to go and live his own life in the flesh worldly and so on and so forth and then he repented and he regretted and he came back and the father saw him coming from afar and he didn't say ah what does he want now even before the son got to the father the father saw him and ran to him with open arms and he kissed him everywhere so even before you go to God, God is there, is waiting, your Father is there waiting with open arms. This is the love of the Father. And this is why we need to approach God always with the consciousness of Abba, Father. Even before the Son got there to the Father, the Son, the, the, the Father saw him from afar. You see, God is looking, God is looking, God is looking. He's looking at that path, waiting to see you waiting for you to come he's just looking at that path he's waiting for you to turn to him and when he sees you turn to him he will run to you he will run to you with open arms and he will kiss you he will anoint you with his kisses he will kiss you everywhere on your face on your head on your forehead and he will hold you tight and this is the love of the father powerful story so I want us now to sit a moment in the presence of God as I said earlier we have to approach God with the consciousness of my father so let's just sit in the presence of God for a moment and repeat after me out loud my father repeat after me my father my father my 
Abba Father, my Father, approach God with the consciousness of Father. <laughs> Abba, Abba Father, speak those words, my Father, my Father, my Father, the consciousness of the fatherhood of God will throw out every fear you have in you, will throw out every worry, anxiety you have in you, will throw out every concern that you have in you, the consciousness of the fatherhood of God. If you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father know how to give good gifts to his children who ask him? And this is why we must always approach God with the consciousness of my father, Abba Father. Abba Father, don't approach your father wondering, does he hear me? Is he here? Am I being heard? Don't approach God in this manner. Don't approach your father in this manner. Approach him with the consciousness of my father, Abba, father. Get in the habit of saying, Abba, father. He is my father and sit in the presence of your father. Approach him being conscious of your relationship with him. Approach him being conscious of a child father relationship. Approach him being conscious of his love. his love not a biological father's love a biological mother's parents love his love because it's different even to a mother's love it's different he loves you so much that he gave his son Jesus Christ to redeem you The love of the Father. He is your provider. He is your protector, your sustainer. He is the source of all your love, all your joy, your happiness, your freedom, your healing, your deliverance, your salvation. He is the source of all. There is no fear because Abba is with you. There is no lack because Abba is your provider. There is no harm because Abba is your protector.
there is no deterioration because Abba is your sustainer. He is the source of all your of love, joy, happiness and everything good for all good gifts come from above. All good gifts come from above. If you can love God, imagine God who is God, who is your father. Imagine how much he loves you. And anyone or anything or any teaching that speaks otherwise is not coming from the Spirit of God. God loves. And if you want to know love, you must come to know the Father. For God is love. He who does not know love does not know God, for God is love. And when you carry the Abba consciousness wherever you go, you will walk in confidence. Because you know your Father is your protector, your Father is your provider. Your father is your sustainer. Let me take you somewhere. This is what I have on my window to read often. Can you see that? Don't walk in today with uncertainty. You know who made today, today. My father made it, not a stranger. And he has my best interest at heart. Every good thing comes from above. I know that in today, there is a favor for me because of Abba, my father. Right? Because of Abba, my father. So lovely people, with that being said. Anointing oil, I will be selling them in five and 10 milliliter bottles. Information below. I'm waiting for the empty bottles to come from, uh, I'm going to order them today, to come from uh, eBay. Uh, might take a week for them to arrive and but if you want to purchase it in advance, because I don't know how many orders will come in, then information can be uh, um, uh, found below. My book, my latest book, Worldly Life of Deception, is live on Amazon. You can purchase that any Amazon worldwide. Information is below. And my books, New Age of Cults of Jesus Christ and Who is God, can be purchased below tithes and offerings link is below and if you need prayers deliverance or healing message me on facebook god bless you